Well, hey guys, what's up? I figured I would share with you all my morning skincare routine today over the summer. Um, just what I've been doing and kind of talking you through the sunscreens that I've been layering. As you know, I've been using Tretinoin at night now since the beginning of January. I've been using it nightly. I put it on at night. Later on this week, I'll share with you guys a nighttime skincare routine for the summer. Um, it's slightly different than what I showed my last skincare routine just because it's really hot and humid here. So stay tuned for that. I know you all have been wanting to know some updates on how my Tretinoin journey is going. So um, here I am, it is, um, my morning and I just woke up so haven't had my coffee yet this is what I look like first thing in the morning you can compare my face now to how it looked first thing in the morning several months ago and you maybe I don't know if you can see a difference between then and now as far as uh, if, if the tretinoin is, is doing anything but personally I do see benefits I feel as though my skin is more is far is firmer and I see some fading of baseline hyperpigment and I'm really seeing some good effects. I had a slight amount of peeling in the beginning and that has completely subsided. So the majority of my morning skincare routine and daily skincare focuses, as always, on sun protection largely. And as always, nothing's changed. I always start my morning off with um, a little bit of BHA in a face wash form to oil prone areas of my T-zone um, around my nose and chin. And this is really just to make use of the salicylic acid. I don't use this for cleansing or anything like that. It helps with oil control, which is really helpful this time of year in Houston, it's very humid. So um, this has been really helpful. Salicylic acid, if you missed my BHA video, focuses in the oil bearing glands and helps to control oil production. So I just use cool water and you know, I put it on the coldest setting. The pipes are actually heat up here and so it comes out kind of lukewarm. So I never use extremes of temperature on my face and I would advise you not to either. Don't cook your face, you're not a shrimp. <laughs> but anyways, I'm just gonna do that. And I like to use the BHA in a face wash the morning um, after I use tretinoin. All the studies with tretinoin suggest that tretinoin should not be used alongside benzoyl peroxide like in the same skincare routine because the benzoyl peroxide can oxidize the um, the tretinoin and compromise its efficacy. It also increases irritation. And so logic kind of follows that salicylic acid potentially could do something similar, although I have to be honest with you, um, I've never really found any data to fully support that. It's just a hunch, um, and it definitely does increase the irritation of it, tretinoin. Uh, so that's why I just don't use them in the same routine, or any acids for that matter, nor, nor would I advise you to. It just increases the irritation. Anytime there's excessive irritation, it decreases compliance causes problems, put you at risk for hyperpigmentation. It doesn't really benefit. So just to let the tretinoin shine, I don't uh, I don't combine them in the same routine, but I really just put a little here and you really don't need, don't go scrubbing your face, really just some gentle finger pad motions. And then I just kind of let it sit on there for a few minutes and rinse it off. So yeah, I mean, Update on the salicylic acid face wash. This is not my favorite one. This is the La Roche-Posay F-Claire medicated cleanser. It um, also has a little bit of their proprietary LHA, which um, can theoretically exfoliate, um, you know, one cell at a time. Although it is, uh, it is uh, their sort of proprietary uh, salicylic acid derivative. So who knows? All the studies were done. We're done by L'Oreal, we shall see. But this isn't my favorite BHA face wash. My favorite one is the Zapsit one. That one is fragrance free. This one has menthol in it, which for people with sensitive skin is not great. It tingles. I put it in there to make you think that it's doing something. Um, and it's not a great ingredient in a face wash. But otherwise it's fine. I will probably, I will continue to use it. It, it's taken me a while to make my way through it, and once it's done, it's done, and I'm gonna go back to Zaps It. That's my preferred 2% BHA face wash. But anyways, I'm just gonna rinse this off. All right, now I just rinsed off the BHA. My face is a little bit damp, it's not soaking wet, but you all know I never towel dry my face 
or you know dry my face and the reason is after you cleanse the skin um, the water on the skin is evaporating and causing trans epidermal water loss that leads to dryness of the skin so you really want to put your moisturizer and if it's in the morning choose a moisturizing sunscreen you really want to start putting that on right away even if it is a sunscreen um, that should go on a dry face, just go ahead and get a layer on, mostly for the moisturizer property. I'll tell you about the sunscreen I'm using in a minute, but um, I just kind of put a little thin base layer on here um, before I start before I start actually layering up my sunscreen. I am using, <laughs> I reviewed for you all a while back, the Altruist SPF 50. This is a chemical sunscreen that's very affordable, formulated by a British dermatologist. Um, a portion of the proceeds go to a charity. No, they don't sponsor me or no, I exist. I just really love this sunscreen. I mentioned it as a, as a good sunscreen for dry skin, but it's really a good sunscreen for oily skin. Super, it's wonderful for sensitive skin. The filters, the chemical filters in this are phenomenal. I'll talk a little bit about them in a minute. You can see it goes around my eyes without any problem. And so I'm putting it on just like a little base layer here first to a damp-ish face. Um, and then I'm gonna get serious. You know, everyone always talks about how much sunscreen you should apply. People have come up with this arbitrary quarter of a teaspoon, but recent studies have actually shown the more time, the, the longer the amount of time, the duration that you spend putting it on, the, the more likely you are to get to the two milligrams per centimeter square are required um, to reach the SPF on the bottle. So that's a little tip. I never like weigh out my sunscreen, like measure it out in a spoon. I just, I just kind of eyeball it and make sure I get it everywhere. Um, and I try not to rub too much uh, because I don't want to just rub it off. It's counter, counter protective. But I actually kind of like to go dotting it on my face in all of the target areas. Um, making sure I get it near my preauricular cheek, um, on my upper lip, my chin, these are all the surface of my face, my neck, later I'll go back and get my ears, and my upper chest, and the back of my neck. I wear sun protective clothing on my body, long sleeves, um, I, I have my upper chest covered, so I don't spend a lot of time generally putting sunscreen on my body um, and mostly put it on my face um, so yeah but you really want to make sure you can find a sunscreen that you can tolerate around your eyes some people find that certain ones sting and burn I mean don't put it directly into your eyes but um, People don't put sunscreen around their eyes, and there are sun-related skin cancers that crop up on the eyes, so very important. But I love this Altruist sunscreen. It is really lightweight and has phenomenal filters in it. You can see I've got like all this cast going on in my face, but once it dries, it dries clear, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and it does work well for darker skin types. Now, um, I love the sunscreen because it's got filters in it that we don't have here in the United States. It has um, Tinisorb AS, which is what makes it really lightweight and, oil and oily skin friendly. And it also has, um, it also has Tinisorb S in it, which will get you coverage not only for UVB, but UVA1 and UVA2. It has Ava Benzone, which is the only, like one of the only filters that we have here in the US for UVA1 and UVA2. This one has that in it as well. But unlike our sunscreens, the presence of Tinisorb, which also gets you UVA1 and UVA2, the presence of Tinisorb stabilizes the Ava Benzone in this. So it makes Ava Benzone a better chemical filter in their sunscreen than in a chemical sunscreen that you would buy in the United States. Um, our chemical sunscreens usually just have Ava Benzone in them and then some UVB filters to make them broad spectrum. But the Ava Benzone starts to degrade um, after you put it on. So you start to lose a lot of UVA coverage. It's just not photostable. It needs 
it really needs other chemical filters in there to stabilize them. We just don't have them here in the US. Um, and because this has the other filters in it that stabilize the Ava benzone, you can get away with actually um, combining it with, with minerals. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. But I'm just gonna put a little on my ears as well. People keep asking me where I get my hair bands from. I get them from Walmart. <laughs> But this one is an old one from Lululemon. They don't make it anymore, so. Lululemon changed their hair bands. They don't like them anymore. They're too, they're too uh, narrow. They used to make these wide ones, but they don't make, make them anymore. So, there's that. I hope Walmart continues to carry the bitty ones. Don't forget the sunscreen on your ears. Skin cancers are common on the ears. And then don't forget to put a little sunscreen right up here close to the ears as well. So this guy has ethyl hexyl triazine, which is Uvenol T150. That is a UVB chemical filter. It also has trisbiphenyl triazine nano tinosorb HUB. That gets you UVB and UVA1. It has bisethyl <laughs> it has this ethyl hexoxyphenyl methoxyphenyl triazine or bimotrizinol, which is tinosorb S, the trade name, and that is UV that will get you UVB, UVA1, and UVA2. And then thirdly, it has butyl methoxy dibenzoyl methane, which is a benzone, which gets you UVA1 and UVA2. So lots and lots of good filters in here for good, broad, truly broad spectrum coverage. I cannot say enough good things about this. Excellent for sensitive skin, excellent for rosacea prone skin, um, and is really lightweight enough to use as just a lightweight summer moisturizer and sunscreen. Great for oily skin, great for dry skin. Um, really, really friendly for everyone. No fragrance, no annoying chemicals. Does have alkyl glucosides in it, which I've said on here before, were named the Allergic Contact Allergen of the Year in 2017. So if you are allergic to those, know that this has it in it. It is not, those are not deadly ingredients. They're gentle plant-derived surfactants that some people can become allergic to. So be aware of that. That is in this and it's in many sunscreens. But speaking of sunscreen, you know I don't just stop at one because <laughs> um, right now I am also using a tinted sunscreen on over. I like to use tinted sunscreens for a little bit of added protection against visible light. Most tinted sunscreens have iron oxides in them. Currently I am using and really enjoying the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Face Shield SPF 50. I reviewed this for you all a while back. I also really enjoy and love L to MD UV Physical, this tinted sunscreen. It has a nice universal tint. It's not like wearing a makeup. And uh, this one is really lightweight and I've really been enjoying it. Now, if you'll recall in some of my videos reviewing mineral sunscreens, I told you guys that uh, there is a theoretical risk when you layer a mineral sunscreen that contains zinc or titanium dioxide on over a chemical sunscreen that you could accelerate the rate of photodegradation of avabenzone. That is why in the United States, the FDA does not allow avabenzone to be combined with mineral um, sunscreen ingredients in our sunscreen. So you'll never see a sunscreen that has avabenzone and titanium or zinc dioxide. So how is it I'm getting away with doing it with the altruist? And the reason is because the altruist has tinosorb S and it has bisethyl hexyl oxyphenyl methoxyphenyl triazine. I got a cheat sheet down here and I'll just have this going off the top of my head. Um, it has tinosorb S in it and tinosorb S stabilizes avabenzone and makes that a non-issue. So you can layer, you can layer mineral and chemical sunscreens if your chemicals are non-American, if they're Japanese, if they're European, because they typically have tinosorb in them, tinosorb S specifically, which will stabilize the avabenzone and also give you give you really good UVA coverage as a filter by itself. So not a, not an issue. But like I said, I mostly just use this not really for um, for like aggressive sunscreen protection, but just over areas in my face where I have a little bit of extra hyperpigmentation, and I've been really putting the you know, where I'm targeting some of my tretinoin action, and I'm really seeing benefits and I wanna protect it. Um, and I'm under, you know, I, 
when I film, I film in front of a light, um, a pretty bright light. So I like to protect my skin from the visible light. Everyone keeps asking me about protecting your skin from infrared. So here's the deal with that. Infrared is largely heat. There's not a filter or a, um, or a mineral that it's going to block infrared, it's, it's heat. So sunscreens will put antioxidants in the sunscreens to theoretically scavenge free radicals that are generated in your skin from, from heat uh, that, could, that do age our skin a little bit further. But, you know, studies have looked at, at the functional, at the, the ability of antioxidants and sunscreens to actually scavenge free radicals, and their free radical scavenging ability is next to nil in topical forms because they're just not really that stable. So I don't always buy, you know, I don't really buy into that, and it's definitely not a selling point for me. Um, you know, try and, the key is to avoid sun exposure during peak hours when the when the sun is high and try and protect yourself from that as best as possible whether or not having a bunch of exotic antioxidants in your sunscreen and paying a premium for it is worth it i'm not convinced but anyways you can see that that goes on really nicely i mean many of you out there are asking is this something men could wear yes this is this is a universal tint if you're not if you're a man that does not want to wear makeup or is not interested in that or you're a woman like myself who does not want to wear makeup or is not interested in that this is this is more of a universal tint it does not it does not look like you're wearing like a true color but the tint in this actually gives you some protection against that visible light that leads to hyperpigmentation so i like that and i've really been i've really been happy with this color science one i know it is on the pricier side they do have a, there are other tinted sunscreens out there that are good and i've reviewed them for you guys but that's what i'm currently using and i'm also continuing to use and have repurchased their total eye renewal three in one this is spf 35 i call it a tinted sunscreen touch-up stick there's just a little bit of tinted sunscreen that you can carry with you um, and I mostly use this throughout the day as like a touch-up um, under my eyes into these areas so that I so that I just keep perpetuating a little bit more of that iron oxide I put it on throughout the day throughout the day I'll take this with me and reapply this every two hours while I'm outdoors I'll at least put this on three times a day regardless of, of what I'm doing even if I'm just staying indoors all day I still put this on at least three times a day and after I put it on I touch up the iron oxide component here and there with this so um, I've really been enjoying that as my morning and throughout the day skincare routine but yeah and even though I'm not a makeup person I have to say with this color science three-in-one eye thing I definitely think it looks makes me look a little bit more awake alert and oriented <laughs> less like I just got hit by a bus um, which can happen sometimes <clears throat> and then I um, you know pre previously and for the most part I've always used the Vanny cream uh, mineral sunscreen on my lips but currently I am using a sunscreen that you guys recommended that it's also European the ultra sun and I'm really enjoying it this is um, SPF 30 this also has um, it has Uvenol A plus it also has I believe it has Tinosorb in it as well really excellent um, sunscreen for the lips um, and I try and reapply this so so much because I'm always drinking water and drinking coffee consuming beverages that I just I try and reapply this as much as possible uh, because sun uh, sun related skin cancers on the lips are common and really a problem they have to be resected in such a manner and really your face put back together in a very very strategic way as you can imagine I mean when you have a big tumor right here get cutting that out and putting it back together and preserving the anatomy so that you can continue to speak and eat and you know um, enunciate <laughs> uh, which I'm having trouble doing right now pre coffee is is you know something that nobody wants to have to go through so do continue to put sunscreen on your lips I'm really a fan of this it's very moisturizing it doesn't dry or irritate my lips I have sensitive the lips the skin on my lips tends to get irritated by a lot of lip products and this one has been really good for me it has um, beeswax and jojoba oil in it um, this is a European sunscreen so um, as far as American sunscreens I really recommend that Vanny cream one it is good non-irritating no nonsense although it does leave a white cast behind but um, I find that once it dries on the lips the, the cast 
the cast fades quite a bit. And many of you have affirmed that as well. So you guys know I film my um, my summer, my what was it, my winter skincare empties, and I showed you that I used up my Maybelline Colossal Mascara. I need to get another one. So I'm using up, uh, this is the Color Science one that I don't like as much. Um, I want to use it up because I have it. So I'm one of those people that if I have something, I like to use it rather than even if I don't like it 100%. Because a mascara especially is one of those things you can't give away, you after you've used it. Gross, don't do that. Sharing Demodex. <laughs> But here's my complicated hair care routine. I basically take my my hair down. It's getting rather long. <laughs> and I don't this is how I comb my hair. I just run my fingers through it <laughs> and take it in a ponytail and I twist it gently, not too tightly. <laughs> And I've been using these hair bands that I get at Walmart. They're from the brand Goody. I'll see if I can find them online, but I like them. They stay in place. They're nice and wide. And it creates the illusion of effort. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically my morning skincare routine. So I've really been enjoying this Altruist sunscreen. <laughs> Again, they don't sponsor me or know I exist. I, I would love to sponsor them. I think they're phenomenal, fragrance-free really great for everybody really enjoying them you can get them if you're in the United States you can buy them on Amazon UK and they will deliver to the US uh, totally worth it they also make a large pump of this I am really a fan of this sunscreen this and L to MD UV clear L to MD UV clear is the American sunscreen that I recommend for daily for the summer months it's nice and lightweight but it's also moisturizing enough in my opinion that if you have a little bit of dry skin it will be good for you um, so yeah this is what I've been loving and using and continue to use for the rest of the hot humid summer but it reapplies easily throughout the day um, and I've also really been enjoying this mineral unforgettable total protection face shield for a little iron oxide coverage but yeah that's basically it you know the focus is on sunscreen and sun protection particularly with tretinoin on board I don't want to reverse any of the benefit that I'm seeing with it I really am I really do do feel as though my skin has improved particularly in the realm of hyperpigmentation and firmness. Um, so comment below on if you think if you think you see a difference. But um, anyways, guys, I hope this routine was helpful and answering some of your questions. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.